Hey everyone, it's Lucky here, and I'm sure if anyone actually is subscribed to this channel, you know that I don't really post these types of videos on my YouTube, or kind of any videos besides the occasional run that I upload, but since I really haven't had the time to stream lately, probably just because of time, probably just being lazy, I'm gonna be straight up honest with you guys, I wanted to start to create some informative content on my YouTube channel, and I thought, what better way to start this new trend than the discussion with probably one of the most exclusive items in Terra that only a handful of people actually know about, the Zenobia Breeze. So the Zenobia Breeze, or the Zenobia Breeze Crate, is one of the rarest items in Terra. It has a similar drop table to that of the Hidden Weapon Sheath or the Transparent Mask, and those are both extremely rare too. Now the interesting thing about this crate is that there's almost no good information available about it, besides maybe Terra lore, but that's not very helpful. That includes online, in-game, or even across publisher websites. In fact, I can probably bet that over half the population of Terra does not even know it exists, let alone what it actually does. So with that being said, I will start this small video explaining what the item is, where to get it, what to do with it, and if you wait until the end of the video, there's even a little surprise waiting for you too. So back when we first got patch 92, the Zenobia Breeze crate was added to the game. This item technically drops from every 65 or higher dungeon, and you can even see the item in instance matching menu as a possible drop. Now, the issue is that this is a little bit misleading. While it is a drop, it is an extremely rare drop. While I'm not sure on the exact number, I can guarantee you that the drop rate must be fractions of fractions of a percent. It makes farming extremely difficult and grindy, but it is still possible to try. While there's not a set way to guarantee getting a breeze from any of these dungeons, there are more efficient ways to try to grind your way to one. The most common way is actually to ignore the endgame dungeons and farm the lower tier ones over and over again. The most common one being Mesolarius Catacombs, a level 65 dungeon. Fun fact, Mesolarius means butcher or slaughterhouse, so the dungeon is basically the catacombs of slaughter, and I'm pretty sure you're going to be doing a lot of it to get to breeze. This dungeon, MC, is the lowest skill difficulty and the fastest to complete out of the entire list of dungeons that drop the Zenobia Breeze. Not to mention, it only requires 3 people rather than the typical 5 to get the full party loot bonus. This makes it easier not only to just fill the party, but also to IMS for the dungeon too. However, if, if possible, it is worth it and also highly recommended to multi-box accounts that are 65 or higher and solo it on your main account while in the party. This not only ensures that you get the full loot bonus when you're in the party with the dummy box accounts, but also that if the breeze does drop, you will be guaranteed that drop too, rather than having to beat out two other players on the roll. In this instance, I just solo queued and I was able to get a pop within a few minutes, or even just under a minute, but if I, the breeze happened to drop at the end of the dungeon, I would have to beat out these two guys before getting the drop. Another option is running the 68 dungeons if they happen to be on double drop. I'm not sure how other regions operate, but on NA we cycle dungeons throughout every two weeks, and if, if RR or the other 68 dungeons happen to be on the rotation, the drop rate of the breeze will be higher. The downside is that there's five people in the party, and you will need to beat out four other people in order to get the roll on the breeze. Multiboxing is not that ideal for the 68 dungeons as it takes significantly longer to solo, and multiboxing five accounts is not ideal or even possible for most players. A small disclaimer, this is a significantly rare drop. I know I've said it a few times, but this might even be an understatement. I personally know multiple people who have run these low tier dungeons thousands of times and have still not been able to see a drop. And that doesn't even include the typical endgame dungeons that are being completed in the hundreds every single day that technically also still drop the breeze. It's important to note that the Zenobia Breeze Crate does not have a beam of light that you often see in other items. In this clip, you can see the purple beam of light for a two-roll item. However, the Zenobia Breeze Crate, which dropped, did not have any beam of light or any notification that it was dropped in the party. This ninja actually won the roll and it was in his inventory as you can see in the item log. However, his party or himself did not even notice that he got such a rare drop until all sets of the runs were complete. To further clarify, since the quality of the clip was not the greatest to see the actual text, this is what the Zenobia Brace crate looks like on the ground, compared to what the beams of lights would be for the rare items. This is important because the breeze could drop in your MC or RR, and you could not even realize it unless you check through your system cab for the rolls or check your inventory in case you want it. So what makes this exclusive and rare item so valuable? Well, if you're lucky enough to get the Zenobia Breeze crate, you can open it for the actual item, the Zenobia Breeze. This also announces it to everyone with a server message that you open the crate and obtain a breeze. Luckily, this is a 100% chance, so you don't have to actually worry about not getting the breeze itself. Once you have it, you have it. The actual breeze opens a small shop with six items in it. Each of these are valuable on their own, but some are worth it more than others. So the first and second item are the Zura's Enchantment Scroll. These are essentially the same item, but one of them would be used on weapon and one of them would be used on armor. 
This is this guarantees a plus one enchantment to any bound piece of superior or mythic Exeter armor. So this would include Annihilation armor, Dark Light armor, or any of the Kai armors, including the Eternal ones as well. So if you had a, a gear at plus 14, you could right click the scroll that you bought from the shop, use it on that piece, and then you'd be able to get plus 15 with 100% success rate. And while it does sound nice on paper, it's definitely not worth buying. In fact, it's probably the worst item in the shop to buy. It is far easier to attempt plus 15 on your own, especially for armors, than the gold or effort it took to get the Zenobia Breeze. Of course, RNG can put into play, but I still wouldn't think that it'd be worth it by any means. The next item in the shop I'm discussing is the Kara's Wisdom Box, or Kara's Wisdom Box. This drops a perfect set of gear infusions for weapon, body, feet, and hand. This is referring to the 4 power 7 crit infusions that you might be able to see on your gear. In addition to just the gear etching, gear infusions, it also drops a full set of relentless etching 4s for all of your accessories from belt to rings to everything like that. This is a good way to min-max your endgame gear set if you happen to have no infusions because infusions could get pricey, however I still would suggest not buying this item if you had to pick. There are multiple ways to obtain etchings and infusions from this game such as the world bams that spawn every 6 hours, crafting for both battered oath and the etching itself, and of course the battered oath merchant in high watch that you can buy different kinds of battered oath with the triumph tokens themselves and of course just gear drops in general that you can get from dungeon vanguards this makes it not worth it because the other ways to get the same uh, same goal is very achievable in game the next item to discuss is the Almiron's Wisdom Box. So when we got level 70 patch, there was a new system added that was commonly known as the Talos system, but I think it's called Skill Advancement in our region, and there's also Skill uh, Optimization. So there's 180 max points, and it's a grind to get the 180 points, and then another grind to get the scrolls required to max those points and options. This Wisdom Box will allow you to instantly get 180 points and unlock all the skills and options for that specific character. This however is not worth it either, in fact it might even be worse than the original enchanting scrolls I discussed earlier. Nearly every single dungeon drops some sort of form of skill advancement tombs or the scrolls itself to unlock the options or advancement. This means that just by casually playing the game you should be able to unlock everything. The rarity of the breeze should not be wasted on unlocking this because it's very easily obtained by playing the game. The breeze itself is so expensive and rare that it should be used on the only the final option which I'll discuss shortly. The final two items to discuss are the Amaran's Relic and Ishra's Haladon Box. These are the most valuable and most commonly bought items from the Zenobia Breeze shop. The Amaran's Box drops a Gold Relic 5 and the Ishra's Box drops a Gold Haladon 5. Buying these will ensure you have the automatic best in slot for the Haladon Relic slot. Gold 5s are a hybrid build of crit and power rather than the normal flat crit and flat power that you see on the Elenu, Tithis, or Karaz, and Dagon blue Haladons and Relics. The gold Veldons also have a higher MP and HP values depending on which one respectively, and it can be a bigger deal for some classes that scale off that with their passives, such as Zerkers or Sork. While a full explanation of these items are likely for another video, the main takeaway is that these hybrid gold relics and Haladons offer a better bonus overall, and also allow more dynamic build to be created with your accessories, etchings, and also your infusions. Another reason why the gold fives are worth buying from the shop is that the relic and haladon system for gold is significantly more expensive than the blue to enchant from a 1 to a 5. There is still a 25% chance to go from a 1 to a 2, 15 for 3, 13% for 4, and 10% for 5, however the cost per try in terms of gold makes it extremely more expensive than the blues. In fact the cost of succeeding from a 1 to a 5 is said to be in the multi-millions. Although the skill advancement mentioned earlier costs around 1.6 mil to max and unlock all the options, it has been estimated estimated that to get even one relic or one Haladon 5, it should cost around 50 mil plus. Not to mention that simply getting gold relics and Haladoms in general are, from drops are also a lot harder to obtain. So even if you had 50 mil to blow on this, you still need to collect an insane amount of bait mats to enchant. So this makes buying the gold 5s even a better option to buy since you get a best in slot item, save a bunch of gold, time, and of course RNG. Currently, the 65 plus dungeons mentioned earlier are the only way to get the Zenobia Breeze crate. In future Keterra patches, however, there's going to be a new way to get the Breeze and also new options to be added to the shop too. The new way to get the Breeze is actually the Sergeto Mystery Merchant. For those of you who do not know, this is an NPC that spawns randomly when you complete a dungeon. It is RNG, but still, it has a chance to spawn. The contents the shop currently has are scrolls that prevent de degradation with a certain percentage, but all the items in the shop are usually random per time you, you see him spawn. We already have this NPC in our latest build, but the contents will be changed to include the Breeze. However, it's going to be at a hefty cost. The only screenshot I was able to track down had the Breeze at 12 mil. I'm not sure if it's going to be a range of prices or a set price, but rest assured that whatever it is, it's going to definitely put a dent in your bank. 
Currently on my server, breezes have sold from 5 mil to 15 mil plus, and I've heard for breezes going for even more too on other servers or regions to the right buyer. With the rarity being so high and the chance for almost any 65 plus to get it randomly from a dungeon, the price can definitely vary from who's selling it. I'm not going to get too much into the price here, I just want to show that the 12 mil price is not too far off from what it is being sold at currently, at least in NA. So the second part of the Kterra patch is that they're revamping the shop to include even more items. They will start to include Blue Relic and Haladon 5s, a plus 1500% scroll rather than the plus 1 scroll we have currently in our shop, and also a full card collection too. The patch notes are still very new and it's only been Google translated rather than a full translation, so just this might not be 100% accurate. It's also worth knowing that in the patch notes the drop rate for the Breeze from Dungeons is getting nerfed when the new items are added. Once these changes are here too, the crate will become a brand new item completely. This means that there's no reason to save an existing Zenobia Breeze in hopes that you'll have more options when that time comes. So if you made it this far, get ready for the surprise. So most of this video has all been screenshots, videos, and just some Twitch clips. So I thought what better way to conclude than to open an actual Zenobia's Breeze crate on video for you guys. So luckily my friend Manny had gotten one from RR and he was willing to sell it to me. So I'm going to be able to open it and also just buy a Halidom 5 as my choice from the Breeze shop. You might be wondering why a sorcerer is going for the Halidom as that has HP and the relic has MP which scales with my passive. Well, last last anniversary month there was an enchanting event and I used my entire bank tab worth of gold relics to try and go for a 5. Ended up with a 4, but I think I'm more than lucky with just a 4. So I ended up just deciding to pick the Halidom 5 as my choice from the shop. I only have blue 4 so it seemed like a logical choice. So now that the shop is actually open, you can actually see the items with a little bit better descriptions, clarity, and you know, a lot better than just the tarot lore screenshots that I was doing before. So this short video ended up becoming around 11 minutes plus, and it actually took a considerably long time to make and prepare than I originally imagined. So if you found this video helpful, please comment below and let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Also, if my information was incorrect or you have something that I could add to this video, please let me know so I can make some edits. I'd love the feedback on these and, you know, for any of my future content too. If you notice, there's not that many Terra PC content creators, so depending on interest, I don't mind working on more videos like this for the community. I would ask though, if you did enjoy the video, to please like it and also subscribe to the channel so more people can benefit from the video just like you did. Also, it pretty much motivates me to not be lazy and publish more too. So until the next hopeful new video, take care.